greetings in a business everything is kind when you talk about hiring new employees launching a new marketing campaign or launching a new project and what the leader asks what's the bottom line what we are going to gain out of it what's the roi return on investment and it's not only a capital investment many times the non capital investments like you know these the marketing is non capital investments and improvement bringing into your projects and improving the whole bottom line of your company in in a really putting in a hyper growth mode you can only do it once you do the roi and i have no better other person better than the founder chairman ceo of roi institute with me today in case you don't know me my name is mohammed sadiq i am the host of growth hacking show where we bring founders ceos presidents serial entrepreneurs to share their expertise how they are helping to grow their company and sharing their passion with us so please join me to welcome dr jack philips the founder chairman of roi institute jack welcome thank you glad to be here ja- jack let let me start with this where were you what happened who you were surrounded with that inspired you to get involved into this roi institute well first we created the institute and we created um a a need for it and that is in, inside lucky um martin lucky martin's the large aerospace company i was inside this company and i was directing the cooperative education program it's a program where we alternate uh work in school with college students engineering students we had uh, 16 universities 350 co-op students and that's a lot of money and so my chief engineer came to me one day and says so jack what's the value of this program maybe we don't need this can you tell me can you actually show me the roi of having this co-op program and that was the beginning of this process at the same time i was working on a masters degree in decision science if you can imagine that that's very common these days but not then and i needed a thesis topic and so i could see a possibility for a thesis topic and satisfying a request from our chief engineer at the same time so we worked on this how do we show the value of this program and all the way to the financial roi we presented it to the executives and we not only kept our budget but we made it a much better program so that's what's happened to us as we uh got this started as an idea at that point we were developing a process we turned it into a business layer that is that is amazing so uh, i'm going to ask i know you that you work with patty patty is your wife as a spouse yes. so working 24/7 with your wife uh, and if she is the boss and how you get manage that conflict as a spouse and as a business partner and travel all around the world and delivering a, a roi for your clients while managing because working with your loved one is kind of very tricky probably many people yeah. can learn from you it's a good question so first we we both understand the business quite well and what makes it successful that is in our business we have about 100 consultants total and they all teach roi they all consult by actually conducting roi studies they write they help us write books and they speak to different groups and we do research on the status of measurement in the different industries so we we both understand the business second we divide our responsibilities she she really is the ceo and runs the business i try to to look at new uh opportunities new markets new countries that we need to move to and so we try to separate that and not overlap so much also we meet meet up with whenever we can she's in dubai just now and i'm in birmingham alabama and tomorrow i'll be in san francisco i'll be on the west coast for a while she was coming from uh dubai to the west coast we're going to spend the weekend at a at a winery a vineyard there in uh, napa valley so we we plug in these social visits wherever we can we meet up at different countries different places to try to put a good time together as well as time for the business. Uh we also try to share each other's skill sets and complement that. Uh I'm quite good at 
coming up with the idea for a book. She's much better at editing that book to make it readable, understandable, and enjoyable. So we've got over 75 books now that support what we do. So we have to have that kind of dialogue together in a book. So it's working. We, we rarely ever have disagreements. We have to really work on keeping it separated, keep the marriage going and the business going too separately. So we don't, we don't intertwine, intertwine those too much. No, thank you. That's a very valuable lesson. So let them, you know, have your assigned role and there's not much conflict going on when you don't cross the line for each other, right? Right. Yeah. So Jack, based on your few decades of experience, what are the top three mistakes uh, you as a company are based on you work with so many clients all around the world, people, uh, the leaders do in their, which stops them to grow their business? Yes. Top three mistakes? Yeah, I think the first one is not understanding the market potential for the business. And so many people have a great idea, but the market's not there or, or the market's not ready for it. So understanding as much detail as we can, who's going to buy your product or service and how long would they buy it and what's the growth possibility. So I think that's number one. Second, I think is not having the financial resources. We have, we know, we work with a lot of new business owners, startups, new consulting businesses, and the, the records are horrible. They, you know, 20% of them succeed in the first two years. The other 80% are gone. And I think the number one there is they don't have enough financial capital to last through a particular crucial time of that startup. And, so, and third, I would say uh, patience. Patience to, for the market to understand what you do and accept what you do. And, and these all three apply to our business as well. Um, we had to clearly define the market and they were not quite ready for it when we first created our methodology, but we had to keep educating the market through articles and speeches and begin to work that. And second, having the financial capital, I waited until we had a good nest egg. We could run the business two years if we got no income. And that was our goal and it, we, we didn't have to do that, of course, but that was our preparation. And having patience, even patience today when we, we're penetrating some fields, but others are slow to embrace what we do. Uh, so we have to have patience and work with them to change the mindsets. And so I think that's the three critical things. Thank you so much. Very valuable lesson. So as we move along, uh, what are the top three success secrets to grow your business? Well, first, I think you... I would look at the intersection of three circles if you think of it this way. One is that you've got to have expertise. Expertise is something you can do quite well. Right now, we, we're the world's most expert group of people on how to value non-capital investments. There's no one out there, not the big four accounting firms and consulting firms. We're the best. And second is have experience at doing it. It's one thing to have expertise, but there's so many people who haven't actually applied it, used it, and gone through the trial and, and errors that you need to in a business. So you've got to have that expertise. But the third one, and I think it's the most critical, and that's the passion. We have a passion about what we do. Our team has a passion of what we do. We love it. Uh, we want to work. I don't want to retire. I don't plan to retire because if you <laughs> enjoy working so much, why do you want to do that? So I think so the intersection of expertise, experience, and passion, if you look at the intersection of that, that's where you need to be with your business. That is wonderful. That's amazing, really. That, why you want to retire? Because you're already doing what you're really passionate about. There's no need to retire, basically. You know, you yes. have fun. So, uh, Jack, how are you growing your business right now in this economy? Well, we're fortunate because we show people how to place a value in what they do. It actually grows in a down economy or it grows in an economy that's struggling. For example, I've had six trips to the Middle East this year. Uh, that's a hotbed of activity for us. We have partners on all of the countries in the Middle East, but the Middle East is booming for us because you've got conflicts and wars and you've got all prices that are down and all kinds of issues that are causing anxiety, uncertainty. And so when you have that, people want to see the value of what they do. They want to hold on to their budgets. They want to keep what they're doing. 
So our business grows. And so we have no problem in a down economy or in an uncertain economy because that's when we're needed most. Now, when things are booming and it's more certain, actually it grows as well because you, they have more money to spend with us now. So it, it works quite well. So uh, we grow uh, organically for one thing, and that's just by word of mouth, it, our referrals are our best um, source of new clients. I'd say 80, 90% of our business comes from satisfied customers. Second, we purposely go after new professional fields. For example, we, we realized we needed a new book on showing the value of innovation. And so our, our most recent book just published is called The Value of Innovation. It shows people how to measure the success of innovation all, all along the process. You see, we invest in innovation. We put money in in R&D and we expect innovation out. But unfortunately, there's no correlation anymore between R&D spending and the innovation. It breaks down somewhere in between. And that's what we do is try to understand that. So we move into new areas and we move into new countries, new cultures. We're now in 70 countries and that requires really good dedicated partners in those countries. So organic growth, new applications, new cultures. That's where we're going. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, no, that's amazing. 80, 90% of your business coming from referrals. That's a big thing that I, it's almost unheard of because I talk to a lot of guests and I, they, they don't share that much high experience. You must be doing a really good job for your clients all over the world. We work hard to make them happy. And we have a, a satisfaction guarantee. That is, if we, have, if we do an ROI study for a project, or we teach you ROI, if you're not happy with it, you pay us nothing. Oh. Absolutely. And so we've never had to tear up an invoice or, or forgive an invoice at all, because that makes us work twice as hard to deliver the good service the client needs. And the whole team looks at that. They know that we're all at risk every time we have, we have a customer in front of us. Cool, cool. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Jack, I am really enjoying this one. I have a very hard question to ask you and that will may, may make you vulnerable. That's enough warning. So, you know, business is roller coaster. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. And, you know, how you really keep going when you can the down moments uh, in your business? Because there's a cycle. I wish it was ever like this, you know. Yes. Well, first, um, we always, uh, when things are down, let's take it on an individual, kind of a micro level. You know, when you got a project that's just not working out, or we didn't get the project that we thought we should uh, receive, or we're actually bidding um, against Deloitte, for example, for a project. And when they really want our methodology, but a, a company like Deloitte with all the resources and the relationships, they get the project, even though it's our methodology and the specs. So in those down moments, we just always remember the good clients that we have, the success that we've generated, the people who are so happy with us, and the things that we know are, are coming. And so we, it kind of makes us get over this small blip. Now the big ones, we're okay because the economy drives what we do. Um, our best tool is our chief financial officer. In fact, our best our best referral is that person, although they don't want to be our best referral. They don't want to refer business to us, but they do it by asking this question. Uh, show me the money. This, this is one of our books that we wrote for uh, CEOs and CFOs, and they love to do this. And in tough times, when budgets are tough, we're in a downturn, they're doing it just now in so many places. They ask the question, so, You've got 45 people in your public relations function. Do we really need 45 people? Maybe you should show me the money for having this debt. That actually happened in one organization. And so we, we're brought in to try to help with that. And we can do that. So our business booms when downward cycles are coming. So um, we got one of those recession-proof businesses, fortunately. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. So as at the Growth Hacking Show community, how we can support you? Well, if, obviously, if we can help you understand the value of what you do, if you're developing a process, a new procedure, a new product, a new service, whatever it is that you're doing, um, just remember this. 
uh, success is, is defined in five levels. If the first one is how people are reacting to what I'm doing, what's their reaction? They must be there. They must see it as valuable, needed, necessary. And then learning. They must learn what you do. They must learn from you. They must have a message they take away. So there's learning. And then there's application. That is doing something, applying something. They must check a little deeper. They must use what you have. They must explore what you have. That's action. We need that action. That's a third level application. And then impact. We want that impact. If we're selling something, that impact is the sales. But if it's internal in an organization, it might increasing our productivity, improving our quality, reducing time. That's impact. And then the last level of success is where we really excel, and that's the financial ROI. How do we know this is worth the journey? We look at the monetary benefits of what we're doing compared to the cost. And it's from our perspective or the client's perspective or someone else. So it's a concept of, of success that builds to this chain of value, reaction, learning, application, impact, ROI. So that's a good concept. We'd be happy to help the community with tools and processes. We can even give some complimentary books there. And if, if your community sees a need for this, we certainly can help with them. If they see someone else who might need help struggling to see the value what they have or the value that they deliver, I think we could give some tools, give them information, give support in some way. Thank you, Jack. As we're about to wrap up, what would you say as a final word? Well, uh, thanks for this opportunity. And we love people who are starting businesses and, and, and getting something started. I think that's our future. And it's nothing more pleasant than owning your own business. I ended my career as president of a banking system. That was 25 years ago. We've had the RO Institute now for 25 years. I can't imagine working inside of a organization anymore. You've got, you've got to be on your own. You've got to develop your business. Make it your passion and you'll get there. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Jack Phillips, for sharing your wisdom with us today on the behalf of uh, Growth Hacking Show community and our entire team. We really appreciate you. This is Mohammed Sadiq signing off from Atlanta, Georgia, wishing you good luck, good sales, and I do our path cross again with another amazing guest. Until then, all best wishes.